All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 94, and today I will be presenting a comprehensive overview of the Egyptian pyramid chemical manufacturing sequence with a brief explanation of the mechanisms of operation, the chemicals being produced at each site and the applications thereof, including an introduction to some new revelations that you can anticipate in the near future. So ladies and gentlemen, if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. This is about to be quite a ride, so buckle your seatbelts. And without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And we will begin this epic journey through the Egyptian pyramid chemical manufacturing sequence here at the Step Pyramid of Saqqara a facility that was designed for the production and collection of methane gas, utilizing the extremely ancient and powerful knowledge that was possessed by these civilizations across the world, which is that of fermentation and anaerobic digestion. This process is very simple, where a slurry composed of water, agricultural scrap material, and cattle manure was introduced into the primary digestion chamber. The bacteria within the manure begin the reaction that digests the agricultural material, releasing methane gas, which rises to the top of the digester and is removed from the system through an extraction shaft. And recall that the step pyramid of Saqqara went through three stages of reconstruction, and the extraction valve would have originally been located at the top of the Mastaba platform. As the demand for the fuel increased and the operations were expanded, so was the structure, encapsulating the interior pressure and preventing the release of methane gas into the atmosphere. As you can see here, a diagram of the step pyramid with the primary digestion chamber in the center, the northern inlet shaft, and southern outlet shaft, which has been confirmed by ground penetrating radar scans and leads toward the southern pit. And here on the right, you can see a modern biogas digester that has the same configuration. The importance of methane gas led to the deification of cattle as sacred animals and the esoteric symbolism of the scarab as the operative behavior of this beetle collecting dung symbolized the first stage of methane production operation collecting the cattle manure. The volume of methane gas produced by this extremely ancient alchemical process may have also been increased by later improvements to the pyramid and method of operation by tapping into subterranean deposits of natural gas bearing bedrock through the tunnel systems beneath the structure that you can see here. And this is the GPR scan showing the outlet shaft leading toward the south and another image of the multiple levels of excavated shafts deep beneath the step pyramid's primary chamber. Tapping into these natural gas deposits also led to the installation of these internal plugged methane gas release valve systems that I have shown both in the southern chamber here with the rimmed plug here and this one in the primary chamber with another rimmed plug designed for its removal to release the gas into a water-filled chamber, allowing it to percolate up into the chamber and into the extraction shaft, which I've also shown evidence for in Sunday Site Visit 9. The methane gas has numerous applications for domestic use, such as heating and lighting, to its utilization as a high temperature flame for metallurgy and smelting and also as a synthesis gas for the production of other chemicals by breaking it down to release the hydrogen, which brings me to the operation of the Red Pyramid of Dashur, which transformed the methane gas into an aqueous ammonia solution in a series of three reformer reaction chambers. And here are a couple spectacular old photos showing the prolific 
dense staining inside of these chambers prior to the modern restorations, which are clear indications of the flow patterns and fluid dynamics within this structure. And I have also presented a chemical analysis of these stains in a three-part series here on the channel to be mostly composed of metallic compounds, most notably iron and aluminum oxides, which are the same materials used as catalysts in the modern ammonia production reaction. And here's a comparison between the first small-scale reactor designed by Fritz Haber for the synthesis of ammonia, this three-chambered system here on the left, and the three-chamber system of the Red Pyramid here on the right. And these three chambers transform the methane gas from the step pyramid into an aqueous ammonia solution in three stages. First, in the primary steam reformer, where the methane and steam are converted into hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Next, in the secondary air reformer, where the hydrogen and carbon monoxide are reacted with air to yield hydrogen, nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. And last, in the final synthesis chamber, where the nitrogen and hydrogen are transformed into ammonia gas, which is then dissolved into water to yield the aqueous ammonia solution product. And the importance of this chemical led to its incorporation in the esoteric symbolism of the deity Amon, the deity of fertility, and the primary application for ammonia was for agricultural fertilizer. And yes, the etymology of our modern word for ammonia is derived from sal ammoniac, the salt of Amon, a direct reference to the Egyptian deity whose name means the veiled or hidden. More on that in episode 72. Ammonia also has other applications in the refining of crude oil in the production of bitumen, as I mentioned in episode 85, with the natural gas and petroleum processing plant directly across the street from the Red Pyramid, giving evidence to substantiate the idea of hydrocarbon deposits in the area and methane-bearing bedrock also possibly existing in Saqqara. Ammonia also has some very interesting uses in metallic ore mining, a discussion that will be coming up soon. And I have even more to reveal regarding the function of the Red Pyramid with some new understanding of the capabilities and mechanisms of operation that significantly increase the temperature and pressures involved in these synthesis reactions. And even in our modern day operations, directly next to your ammonia plant will be a secondary facility that transforms the ammonia into a solid fertilizer compound, making it much easier to store, transport, and apply than an aqueous solution, bringing me to the function of the bent pyramid, which was designed for exactly this purpose, to convert the aqueous ammonia solution from the red pyramid into a solid ammonia-based fertilizer, ammonium bicarbonate or urea. Through a process that involves the percolation of carbon dioxide gas, which was extracted as a byproduct from the secondary air reformer of the Red Pyramid prior to the final synthesis stage through the aqueous ammonia solution, which yields ammonium bicarbonate. This reaction occurs in the upper primary reaction chamber of the bent pyramid, and then the solution flows down into the lower separation chambers, where the product slurry is collected out of the lower separation chamber and the upper separation chamber acts as a secondary reaction and reflux chamber. Again, the main application for this solid ammonium bicarbonate is for fertilizer, which was utilized to terraform the desert during the Saharan wet period from 8500 BC to around 5300 BC. More than 3000 years of chemical production before these pyramid manufacturing systems became inoperational. But I have even more coming up regarding the function of the bent pyramid, a secondary hypothesis for the product of this structure, which was actually my first concept for how this structure operated. However, at the time of writing my first book, I did not have some of the evidence that I have now, which has completely changed my understanding of the capabilities of these structures and has led me to believe that my original hypothesis may have merit. More on that coming up very soon. 
So now we have methane gas at the step pyramid of Saqqara, an incredibly useful fuel, a synthesis gas for the production of other chemicals, and an incredibly useful smelting and metallurgical application. We have the pyramids of Dashur producing fertilizers and ammonia that can also be used for refining petroleum and for metallic ore mining. Absolutely essential functions for any industrial civilization. But that is just the beginning of what was being accomplished within these pyramids. They needed a more powerful reactive chemical that could accomplish their ultimate goals, bringing us to the Giza Pyramid chemical manufacturing complex, starting with the Great Pyramid, a structure that was designed to produce a dilute solution of sulfuric acid in a process that resembles the modern day contact process, where the subterranean system is a water pump that drives water into the upper chambers. The king's chamber is a furnace for the production of sulfur dioxide. The antechamber is a catalyst chamber, and a full explanation of the function of this particular component will be coming up soon. The grand gallery is the contact process chamber where the sulfur trioxide is dissolved into water, and the queen's chamber is the extraction chamber to remove the solution from the system. And here is a GIF that illustrates the process. Just replace these modern components that you can see here with the ancient chambers that I just described, and you can see the entire system in operation. The evidence of this dilute solution of sulfuric acid within these chambers has been presented in episode 82, chemically resistant coating compounds and calcium sulfate, as well as in episode 92, unknown facts about the Great Pyramid. And the primary application for this dilute solution of sulfuric acid would have been for metallurgy in the mining, separation, and purification of metallic bearing ore. But let me read this from Britannica Online that summarizes everything that I have presented thus far. Sulfuric acid is prepared industrially by the reaction of water with sulfur trioxide, which in turn is made by the chemical combination of sulfur dioxide and oxygen, either by the contact process or the chamber process. In various concentrations, the acid is used in the manufacture of fertilizers, pigments, dyes, drugs, explosives, detergents, and inorganic salts and acids, as well as in petroleum refining and metallurgical processes. Are you starting to see the big picture now? Fertilizers, petroleum refining, and metallurgy. Hopefully it is all coming together, but I'm not quite finished yet. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new six degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. All right, now onto the Central Pyramid of Giza. And as you have seen thus far, these structures work in conjunction with each other in a series that transforms one chemical into the next. And the same is true here on the Giza Plateau, where the Central Pyramid was designed to convert the dilute sulfuric acid from the Great Pyramid into a solution of hydrochloric acid. In a process that resembles a laboratory scale reaction of sulfuric acid and sodium chloride that releases hydrogen chloride gas that is then dissolved into water to produce a hydrochloric acid solution. So you have your primary chamber here, a system of connecting tubes, and another beaker over here that dissolves the gas into a solution for collection. And that is what we have here within the chambers of the central pyramid with the primary reaction chamber here, the connecting shaft system here, and the collection and extraction chamber down here. And I have also presented evidence of the sodium chloride that was found within the primary chamber and the chemically resistant coating compound that sealed the limestone walls in Sunday site visit eight. And of course, hydrochloric acid 
also has many applications. One being for the production of ferric chloride, a coagulant used in ancient water purification as described in episode 86 regarding the function of Gizr el Mudir, which is easily produced by reacting hydrochloric acid with iron oxide. Hmm, does this ring any bells? Central pyramid, hydrochloric acid, iron oxide deposits. Now we're getting somewhere. And of course, hydrochloric acid also has other metallurgical applications as you cannot make aqua regia without hydrochloric acid. Aqua regia being composed of one part nitric acid and three parts hydrochloric acid. So the question is, where were they getting the nitric acid? All of this coming up soon, exclusively here on the land of Keb. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. The ancient chemical manufacturing operations were not limited to Egypt, but they are found within structures all across the world. Bringing us to ancient Ireland and the passage chamber mounds, such as Newgrange, which was designed to transform a marcasite or iron disulfide into ferrous sulfate, also known as green vitriol, through a process of moist airflow circulation and oxidation within the reaction chamber. This slowly converts the iron disulfide into green vitriol, which is then leached out of the chamber in an aqueous solution. And this process is symbolically depicted and explained by the curb stone that sits at the opening of Newgrange. This stone is an ancient instruction manual, a rudimentary description of a chemical reaction sequence that shows exactly how this structure operated as explained in episodes 7 and 76. I have also revealed the role of sunlight in this chemical conversion process, where the sun provides the UV rays that enable the final transformation of Fe3 plus ions into Fe2 plus ions in episode 67, enabling the production of crystalline ferrous sulfate, an extremely useful product for an ancient civilization as it could be introduced into the nearby bogs to allow the natural conversion into deposits of bog iron, ensuring that every generation to follow would be able to harvest this valuable metal from the bogs, or it can be distilled to produce the iron oxide directly. Green vitriol is also used to precipitate gold that has been dissolved in a solution of aqua regia that I just mentioned allowing the extraction of this extremely valuable purified metal. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a comprehensive overview of the hypotheses contained within the first book of the Land of Chem series, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. But this is only the introduction and initiation. There is so much more to this story that'll be coming up soon. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 94, the Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Manufacturing Sequence. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 22 from the Bent Pyramid of Dashur. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.